Are we over here now? Yeah. Mr. Buffett, how do you know when to sell a business and when is the time to do that? Well, the answer, the question about selling a, a, a really great business is never, you know, because to sell off something that is a really wonderful business because the price looks a little high or something like that, it's, it's almost always a mistake. And it took me a long time to learn that. But, uh, I haven't fully learned it yet, but it, 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 uh, it's rare uh, that it makes sense if you really believe that the long-term economics of the business are terrific. It's very rare it makes any sense to sell it. Now, if you get into some technology company or something that, that where five guys are out in a garage someplace doing something that's going to change the whole industry, that, that's beyond me anyway. And it, 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 if you try to jump from flower to flower among groups like that, I think you probably have to because I, I'm not sure that you can pick permanent winners. But, but I would say that if you keep it very simple, uh, we own a lot of Gillette, for example. There are 20, 21 billion razor blades used in the world a year. 30% uh, of those are Gillettes, but 60% by value are Gillettes. They have 90% market shares in some countries, in Scandinavia and Mexico. Now, when something's been around as long as shaving, and you find a company that has, has that kind of both innovative power in terms of developing better razors all the time, <clears throat> plus the distribution power and the position in people's minds. You know, for an item that only costs 20 bucks a year, I mean, you know, the difference, here's something you do every day. I hope you do it every day. And uh, for, 20, for 20 bucks a year, you know, you get a terrific shaving experience. Now, men are not inclined to shift around a lot, you know, when they, uh, when they get that kind of a situation. So you get that, and, uh, you know, who knew has come into the into the blade market. Wilkinson, 30 years ago, had a, a shot for a period like that, and they didn't take advantage of it with a stainless steel blade. But it's not going to change a lot. And I like businesses where I think I know what it's going to look like in 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 years. And I think I know what Gillette will look like, and I think I know what Coke will look like. They, uh, and it opens up around the whole... I mean, you know, for one thing, you go to bed feeling very comfortable, you know, just thinking of 2.5 billion males with hair growing while you sleep. I mean, that's... <laughs> No one at Gillette has trouble sleeping. I mean, uh, it's like investments. That's the beauty of the investment business. I don't have to be right on all of these companies I don't understand. I don't have to be right on Oracle Systems or Microsoft or DuPont. I just have to be right on one decision a year. It's a beautiful business that way. Now, I was in the department store business for a while. Don't ask me why. But I was in it, and if my competitor air conditioned, I had air conditioned. If my competitor offered 18 months earnings instead of 12 months earnings, I had to offer it. If you put in an escalator, I had to put in. All of those were defensive decisions. I had to make those like that. I mean, he was throwing pitches at me, and I had to swing, no matter whether the ball was good or not. But in investments, there's no such thing as a called strike. You can stand there at the plate. Very rich, because you would think about every single one you made. And, and when, you, when you knew enough to make a decision, you'd do it on a big scale. Uh, but buying businesses on Wall Street is so easy. You can buy one at 10 o'clock and sell it at 10.05, and you, know, you can become a part owner of uh, General Electric at 10.10. That the very ease with which that can be done causes people to do a lot of things that don't make a lot of sense. But most of the fortunes uh, have been made in relatively few securities and uh, and ones that were held for a very long time and ones that the buyer understood.